up everybody welcome back to another video in this video i have something that's very exciting planned for you guys okay in this video we are going to be talking about potential trade targets for the Detroit Lions after that huge loss to the Minnesota Vikings giving up 42 points to a team that averaged 25 coming into the game also we're going to hear from guest star Skip Bayless the real Skip Bayless huh and also we're going to talk about Matt Patricia's defensive scheme so let's get this thing started All right, everybody, so we are going to start off with our special guest, Skip Bayless. Okay, Skip Bayless has apparently wanted to join to talk a little bit, answer a few questions about the Lions uh, after the Minnesota Vikings game. So, Skip, um, after the Minnesota Vikings game, how, how do you feel about the Detroit Lions' performance defensively? For some reason, none of my coaches were able to light a big enough fire under my defense because it just came out flat, and I've told you all year long, I trust my offense more than my defense because my defense can lay eggs. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, now, Skip Bayless, how do you feel about the Detroit Lions' chances to turn this season around and potentially still make the playoffs? Free it up. Let it fly. Let it flow. And they're just fun to watch because there's so much exploding coming-of-age talent. So, again, I might be going a little hard overhead here, but I think they're playing so confidently right now. I'm starting to think they can also hang on to the playoff spot. Okay, very interesting. So now that we are done with our special guest, Skip Bayless, we're going to be talking about the five trade targets that the Detroit Lions may take. Now, I came up with this list, wrote down all these players, came up with all these stats and everything, and it's super cool. But basically, these are in a really specific type of order. It really doesn't matter. But there was a couple of things I had to take into consideration. One, which player would I want the Detroit Lions to trade for? Two, which player do I think the Detroit Lions will trade for? And three, which makes the most sense for the Detroit Lions. Three factors are all very important, okay? So some of these guys on this list may be more who I think the Detroit Lions will trade for, and another guy on this list may be who I want the Detroit Lions to trade for, maybe not as much as I think the Lions will do this, okay? So that's what we're going to be looking at. Again, no specific order. They are a top five, but you can throw these in any order that you want, okay? So I'm going to start off at number one, and that is Leonard Williams. Now, Leonard Williams is a defensive lineman uh, that could potentially come into Detroit Lions and completely help out this defense, okay? The Detroit Lions are dealing with tons of injuries on the defensive line with Mike Daniels, Sean Hand, and Austin Bryant. Now, Austin Bryant was the guy that we knew he was going to be hurt, but the other two guys, Deshaun Hand and Mike Daniels, Deshaun Hand hasn't played once this year, and Mike Daniels has missed a lot more time than I think a lot of people expected at that defensive line position. That's led to less rotations on the defensive line, and a lot of talent is actually gone from this roster. Right now, the line's sitting at 2-3-1. They need to find a way to turn it around and get this defense going. After last week's performance, which was terrible defensively, giving up, again, 42 points to the Minnesota Vikings, we didn't seem to be able to stop them at all the Detroit Lions may want to make the move to help over help out their defensive line now this is a guy in Leonard Williams who can help now but he can also help for the future he's not a super old defensive lineman but he does have a lot of talent Leonard Williams isn't necessarily known to be a guy that gets tons of sacks but he is also a guy that can make a lot of big plays in the running game he makes a lot of tackles in the backfield he makes a lot of plays in the rushing game and that's what the Detroit Lions look like they need help in sure you need rushing help but like Trey Flowers said it all starts with the stop with stopping the run if you can stop the run then you can force you know them to pass the play action messes you up because they can run the ball so you have to stop the run first well Leonard Williams would be perfect in doing that with the Detroit Lions he can stop the run very well again he's not too old he has 17 career sacks so he can put up sacks he's just really good at tackling behind the line I think that would be a really good fit for the Detroit Lions and also someone that I would like to see for the Detroit Lions as well next up Bond and Miller now this is probably more on the side of a guy that I want less with the Detroit Lions might do but uh I would love this can I just say I would love this move by the Detroit Lions now there would be a couple of stipulations obviously the Detroit Lions would probably give up a little bit more than you would hope for. But at the same time, you're also getting a talent in Von Miller that is really unmatched throughout the league. Now, Von Miller is not the youngest player defensively, okay? But this is a versatile guy that can get on the line and play linebacker. He would fit the scheme really well. He's not a locker room problem, and he does a lot of good things, okay? This would bring a Khalil Mack type of effect to the Detroit Lions, just like it did when the Chicago Bears made that huge trade, right? They made that big trade. All of a sudden, they win the division. So why don't we do that? I think we should do that as the Detroit Lions, okay? I would have no problems with it. Look, this man has been in the league for a little bit, but he has over 100 sacks in his career. Over 100 sacks. 100 and a half. 100 sacks. I mean, that is not anything you would take take slightly, okay? Look at his stats. 
starting in 2018, where he had 14 sacks, 17, 10, 13 and a half, then he had 11, then he had 14, then five, then 18 and a half, and then 11 and a half. This dude puts up numbers. When you talk about sacks, he puts up numbers. And as Lions fans, if we want to find a way to get pressure. Well, if we want pressure, then this is a man to get. This is the highest tier. This is the most elite player on this list. At the same time, it would take a little bit to get him, and obviously, he costs some money. So we'll see if the Lions can find a way to do this. I don't think they will necessarily, but I would love to see it. I think this would be one of those generational players that would change this defense and maybe give them some like momentum, maybe some motivation. Like, all right, come on, guys, we can do this. Because it's not even all about just that one player. It's about, hey, the fact is they believe in this defense. We're going to bring in more talent because we want to win now. We're not trying to wait. We want to win now. So you go out there, you spend the picks to bring in Von Miller because there's not many replacements for Von Miller in this league. Next up, coming in number three is a guy that's kind of a sleeper, a guy that you guys have talked about sometimes, and that is Vic Beasley. Now, Vic Beasley is another defensive player, and he hasn't seemed to be the great fit for Atlanta at this point in time, okay? It just doesn't seem to be a great fit there with Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley, the 27-year-old uh, defensive player. This guy can get pressure once again. He's kind of a sleeper because he's not known to have the insane stats, and he's also a guy that I don't think the Detroit Lions would have to give up a huge pick for. He does have 31 career sacks, so it's not like he can't make plays in the backfield. He definitely can, and I think this would be a guy that you definitely would get for for less than what you would get for Von Miller, and obviously he's a really good defensive talent, and Matt Patricia loves these kind of guys. He usually makes them very good, and that would really fit with the Detroit Lions very well, in my opinion, and I think a guy like Vic Be Beasley uh, would bring some star talent and definitely help out with that defensive line that seems to be, you know, a loss for some mojo, okay? Maybe give them some kind of swagger back, because that's what it really looks like they need, and a guy like this could definitely do that. Next up, coming to number four is a guy that I know a lot of people don't like, but I had to put him on the list because I see the Lions doing this. I would not be surprised if this happened. The Lions have inquired about Kenyon Drake before, and I think it would just make sense if Detroit Lions do this, okay? They just lost Kerryon Johnson. Apparently, he's a week-to-week -week type of injury right now. We don't know how long he's going to be out. The fact is, he's probably going to be out for at least one week, and I wouldn't be surprised if Detroit Lions look somewhere for a running back. Now, some people don't think that's a problem. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. The fact is, the Detroit Lions are looking at running backs right now, and maybe the Lions believe that is the issue. They played Ty Johnson a lot more last week. They didn't have a terrible game, just didn't get a lot of carries. But now with Carry on Johnson, now Jay McKissick and Ty Johnson are only two. I would not be surprised if the Detroit Lions went out and traded for a running back like Kenyon Drake. Now he hasn't been absolutely terrible. Okay, now this year hasn't been his best year, 3.7 yards per carry, which is actually sadly pretty much better than all of our running backs. That's sadly, but it's the truth. But going to 2018, he averaged 4.5 yards per carry, 15, 4.8 yards per carry. And in 2016, which was his first year, 5.4 yards per carry. That's not bad. And he also has 22 receptions already this season. So we can put up some numbers. Now, he may not be what you expected him to be, but he's still a pretty good player. And uh, I think there's a lot of upside there for Kenyon Drake. He's not too old either. But I know some people are like, like him. I know some people don't. So we'll see what happens. And finally, coming in at number five, I have Ryan Kerrigan. This is kind of a sleeper again. Maybe a surprise pick, you may say. But I've always liked Ryan Kerrigan. Okay, this guy is an older defensive player. He's 31 years old. But like Von Miller, guy puts up numbers. Okay, I believe his career sacks are around 86. I believe that's what it is. This dude is insanely good over his time, and it's not like he's dropped off. In the last two seasons, he's had at least 13 sacks. Last two seasons, 13 sacks in each of those last two seasons, okay? So it's not like he's just dropping off of the face of the earth. No, this guy's still putting up numbers. I believe he has two sacks right now. Ryan Carrick going to help out, okay? He can play linebacker and defensive end. He is a six foot four, 265 pound man who's veteran. He's got a lot of leadership, okay? He's not terrible in the locker room. He's not a bad player in the locker room. Again, 31 years old, so he's not super young. At the same time, he would instantly make an impact on this Detroit Lions team. I'm looking at my list. I forgot a player. It's Chandler Jones, okay? Now, I'm not gonna lie. I forgot to put this guy on here, okay? Um, now. Would I love Chandler Jones? Absolutely. But I don't think necessarily the Cardinals will trade him. They just won three straight games, okay? So this was a team that in the past we thought, okay, this team's just kind of given up on the year. They may just start trading to play away players. Maybe not, okay? They just won three straight games, and Chandler Jones had four sacks in the last game. So I don't know necessarily if this guy would even be an option. But obviously, if we could do it, I'd be good with that. So I just wanted to... I just want to hop in, but I, I got to go, man. I got to go. Ah! So that, those are the five players I can see Lions trading for and they target before the trade deadline. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Next up, Matt Patricia has talked about the Detroit Lions defensive scheme. And after last week, we are all looking for answers. Like what in the world just happened? Matt Patricia says this. Matt Patricia basically comes out and says, look, it's not a scheme thing. I've ran all the schemes. I know more schemes defensively than probably anybody else does in the NFL.
It doesn't start with the schemes. It starts with the fundamentals, the footwork, the, the tackling, the hand placement. It starts with all that, the fundamentals, okay? It starts at the beginning for us because last week wasn't basically the scheme that was the problem. It was the fact that we couldn't tackle. And I agree, but I disagree as well. I obviously agree that, heck, we didn't tackle a dang thing. We missed way too many tackles. We beat ourselves, and they had to play a lot better. These are... NFL players, they get paid, they're adults, they have to go out there and just have a better performance. You put them in the best game, but if they don't perform, they don't perform. Now, I think there was an argument to be made that maybe we should have blitzed a little bit more. We did mix in the blitz, which I'd like to see a little bit, and it helped out against the run, but at the same time, it's kind of that situation where, okay, look, they are, you know, what did we do? Obviously, you should have made some changes. I could just say, I can agree with you if you said, okay, we should have did something different. At the same time, these players need to step up. They didn't make any plays tackling. They missed too many tackles. They didn't make many plays in the backfield. And uh, just not wrapping up, okay? It was simply just going for shoulder to shoulder. And Elvin Cook's going to run you over every time. That's something that needs to be fixed. He's going to watch the film and he's going to fix it. That's what it's going to come down to. So it's not the schemes in Matt Patricia's eyes. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's what Matt Patricia had to say. And I thought that was super interesting, okay? So those are the two things that we wanted to touch on this video, and we did. Anyways, I appreciate you all for stopping in. If you guys have any comments, please comment down below. Also, check out the dot shop and hit the subscribe button because I appreciate all of you guys that watch this video. Thank you, Prof, for watching, and I'm out.